Well, hello everybody. And thanks so much for being there. So today we are going to speak about Eros, the physical uh, passionate love, about Philos, friendship love, Storge, family love, and Agape, unconditional love. Even though I really don't like labels <laughs> at all, to describe uh, the four types of love, we will use these four famous Greek words. Eros, Storge, Philos, Agape. Please, as usual, take only what really resonates with you. Um, only what you feel deep within to be true. And remember that this is just my point of view. It is part of the knowledge I have been reading, learning, studying, experiencing, and it is seen and interpreted through my lens. So it is my personal point of view. During this video, I will mention uh, three great names because they uh, actually inspired me. And I will quote them and then I will give you my point of view. Uh, I just modified sometimes uh, the quotes to make them shorter, right? Okay, the first is Paolo Coelho, who is my favorite writer. And he wrote about uh, different forms of love in his book, The Pilgrimage. The second is C.S. Lewis, who wrote the book The Four Loves in 1960. And then Lorenzo Quinn, he created one of my favorite artwork called The Four Loves. I think it was 2000. And I remember I saw uh, that sculpture, that artwork uh, for the first time in London at Harrods. And I literally fell in love with it, was love at first sight. <laughs> Thanks to them for inspiring my thoughts today. So why don't we start talking about Eros, maybe the most famous type of love. Uh, Paolo Coelho wrote about it, and I will quote, the healthy and necessary attraction a human being feels for another. Eros, the spirit that unites them, will start showing only its mean side. And what God had destined for man as his noble feeling will be the source of hatred and destruction. This is quite scary. And this is what C.S. Lewis wrote about Eros, that he calls romantic love. And I quote, Lovers are always talking to one another about their love, and they are normally face to face, absorbed in each other. The danger in romantic love is to follow blindly after a feeling of passion. Then we celebrate the passion and think its absence means such love has died. 
The event of falling in love is of such a nature that we are right to reject as intolerable the idea that it should be transitory. It has made appetite itself altruistic, tossed personal happiness aside as a triviality and planted the interests of another in the center of our being. Spontaneously and without effort, we have fulfilled the law towards one person by loving our neighbor as ourselves. Now here goes my thought about Eros. I will give you an example, a story, a famous story. Maybe some of you are probably thinking about nine weeks and a half, uh, but I'm uh, a bit more romantic and maybe classy. So think about Romeo and Juliet. Shakespeare, Romeo and Juliet. So young, barely knew each other, madly in love with each other. Love at first sight. At first sight, it means they thought to be in love without knowing each other. And the feeling was intense, very intense. And there was passion, drama, anxiety, torment, despair, insomnia, hunger of the beloved, thirst of the beloved, jealousy, possessiveness. It doesn't sound romantic. This kind of love is based on physical appearance and chemistry. It is followed by physical attraction, eventually sexual relationships. Eros, it's, I cannot breathe without you, I can't sleep without you, I cannot live without you. In fact, Romeo and Juliet, they ended up both dead. Tragedy and destruction. No happy ending. And this happens when the foundation of a relationship is very fragile, um, which is physical appearance, physical attraction, chemistry, sexual chemistry, and also subconscious stuff going on as well. This usually leads into something that doesn't last. Luckily, there are some exceptions where love at first sight grows into a solid relationship. But this tends to happen when the people involved have no emotional traumas, no emotional issues, no lack of love, when they had happy parents, when they come from um, a non-toxic environment. But mainly Eros is when you like something superficial of the other person. The smile, the shoulders, chest slash breast, the voice, the eyes, uh, the way he, she walks, the accent, legs, hair. Um, if that's the case and you feel your happiness depends on the presence of the object of your desire, you are probably experiencing eros and probably a toxic relationship. So, you know, if you are 15, 18, 20, 21, it's perfectly fine. Live it. Live it. You need experience. 
But if you are in your 30s, 40s, 50s, so then please pause and reset. That's my advice.